The book of Colossians is such an important book. For while we live in a world where the majority rejects the truth of Christ, Colossians boldly and unapologetically proclaims Jesus as God, as supreme, and as all-sufficient. We will see his supremacy over all creation, over the church, and over salvation. We will also learn of our sufficiency in him alone, and in this we will be instructed in a practical and personal application of his power to our lives. As for our author and recipient, Colossians was written by the hand of Paul and was addressed to the saints of Colossae, a town located approximately 100 miles east of Ephesus. Colossians was likely penned during Paul's first Roman imprisonment and is believed to have been sent around AD 60 by the same hand who carried another of his epistles to the church in Ephesus. This close relation of Ephesians and Colossians is supported by the striking number of similarities to be discovered through a simple side-by-side -side comparison. One facet of Colossians, however, that sets it apart from Ephesians is its purpose. It seems to be universally accepted that Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote this with a desire to combat certain heresies or false doctrines that were beginning to circulate in the area. Let's briefly look at these. The main heresy was one that was in its beginning stages. It would eventually develop into what we know as Gnosticism. The Gnostics were a group who prided themselves in their knowledge, so much so they named themselves after the Greek word for knowledge, which is gnosis. Like most cults, they claim to have a superior understanding to everyone else, and greater and deeper revelation than even the apostles. The problem was their secrets contradicted God's word. Some Gnostics, for instance, denied the humanity of Christ, claiming he was an influence of God that came upon the man, Jesus, and just prior to his death, that influence left. Along with this, they introduced many other similarly strange and dangerous views. A good rule of thumb to keep in mind as people try to pitch to us a new idea or a new discovery about God or from his word is this. Generally speaking, if it's new, it's probably not true. And if it's true, it's probably not new. Along with these early stages of Gnosticism, there were also traces of antinomianism. These folks maintain that God's grace removed the need for the Christian to practice self-control. The basic idea being if you're feeling it, go for it. God's grace has you covered. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out where that's going to lead. Often we do feel like doing the right thing, but not always. If in those moments we did exactly what we were feeling, there would be in our wake a trail of carnage and destructive sin. Clearly, the folks who ascribed to this teaching hadn't received a copy of Paul's letter to the Galatians, which in chapter 5 includes self-control and the description of a fruit-bearing, spirit-filled individual. So Gnosticism, Antinomianism, there was also Judaism. This group was all about the law of Moses and certain ceremonial observances. If you do this or observe that, if you cross your T's and dot your I's, then you are really doing it right, and that shows that you love God. The reason all three of these heresies were so dangerous and destructive is because they each in their own right would in the heart of the individual undermine the finished work of the cross. They would either add something in or take something away from the simple gospel message, and that, no matter how small the issue, is a work of the enemy whose goal is to get people to stray from the transforming power of the gospel experienced in relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul, having been radically converted by a revelation of Jesus in a personal way, knows the work he experienced and continues to experience is exactly what the Colossians needed as well. This brings us to what I love about this epistle, and that is the way Paul is led by the power of the Holy Spirit to address the issue of these false teachings. Instead of coming out and directly attacking specific tenets of these doctrines, the Spirit leads him to simply lift up and exalt the person of Christ. See, our God knew the best way to equip these Colossians to recognize and deal with false teachings and counterfeit Christ was to encourage them to get more acquainted with the real thing, to get to know Jesus. 
In Philippians 3.8, Paul speaks of the surpassing value of knowing Christ. Knowing Jesus changes everything, and that is our hope for each of you as we study together this letter to the church in Colossae. Thank you for watching this latest offering from Honeycomb Summaries. We pray these five-minute chapter overviews are a blessing and serve to help you grow closer to God. Please take time to go back through and read and study each chapter for yourself. If you're here and don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and aren't assured of the hope of heaven, please don't put off that important decision another day. For more information, search our channel for a video called Three Minutes That Could Change Your Life. Please share this video with anyone who might like to learn more about what God has to say in His Word. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified as new content is released. Thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you.